dear President, thank you very much for that, that warm welcome. Uh, and do permit me to just say a few words in my own language first. Malta, will will Malta, Malta, But I've just said it was such a great pleasure to be here and for us to be able to discuss all these issues that you have indeed mentioned, President, but also to be able to see how, on so many of them, uh, the position of Ireland and Malta is so similar. Indeed, it is of some matter of the greatest encouragement to us as well that many of the issues that have been advanced by Ireland in its non-permanent uh, period as non-permanent member of the Security Council will be continued when, uh, when, when Malta takes its position. It's an even greater, I think, an example of countries cooperating on the importance of the issues themselves, uh, that our permanent missions are cooperating with each other already, and that there is a, such a, a very valuable a diplomatic exchange in both continuing teams we're introducing new teams which the Maltese government uh, <coughs> is introducing. I very much always have welcomed our meetings, not just at the IRIOLIS group, but the matters that we have discussed between ourselves and indeed in our communications with each other. We're very, both of us, are very, very, very anxious to draw attention to how we have used neutrality, for example, always speaking of it, uh, and not, always, not being trapped into notions of what it is not, but rather of what it is, because we have been acting on it. We have been just using positive neutrality. I said since Ireland joined the United Nations, there's hardly a day that it hasn't been serving somewhere in an international peacekeeping force respected for that, and very often side by side were, of course, members of the Maltese, Maltese soldiers. And I think then as well, with the training periods that we have had, and now we are actually cooperating very, very much with each other. We touched on many challenges, and both the President and I discussed how, uh, as our planet burns, and so many countries are carrying the countries who made the least contribution to, the, to climate change are carrying now immediate and terrible consequences. Images of people dragging their dead animals across the burning sands of Africa, countries on the verge of, uh, of, 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 of famine. And again, all of this is, is that, of course, we can understand, and indeed I join with the President in condemning unequivocally the uh, the war that has been inflicted on the people of Ukraine, uh, both with loss of life and loss of homes and loss of communities. But it has had the effect very, of uh, deflecting our attention too, well certainly attention, uh, because there's a limited amount of space for discussion from issues that can't afford to be neglected, be it in relation to climate change, uh, global hunger, be it in relation to other issues in relation to the possibility of building, uh, building anticipating conflict and avoiding conflict. I think there's, uh, as well, it was very easy speaking to, to, uh, to, to, the, to the President because of the background that Malta and, uh, and Ireland share. We have a sophisticated relationship with constitutionalism, uh, which uh, this is a hundred years since the 1922 constitution in Ireland was, was the 1921 constitution in the Maltese mm -hmm. case. But uh, I think uh, it, there is something else as well that has arisen in relation. People sometimes wonder why it is that what are called smaller countries, countries with the smaller populations of the European Union are always the best prepared when it comes to their turn to exercise presidencies. It's the same in relation to international affairs. But then again, Ireland and uh, Malta uh, are, are countries that, for example, we will be, we will discuss future areas where we will be able to cooperate even more. We took note of what is happening already with some of our third level institutions, with some capacities in all sorts of areas. 
including areas for which I must say I am honoured to come to Malta to celebrate its uh, international maritime law and its introduction. The very first uh, use of the, the, the word sustainability occurred here, and there are some distinguished people who have made lifetime contributions uh, in, in many of these areas. I think as, as well, the stress of Phil Icon on uh, Malta is a, a frontline state in relation to migration, and we are at one with, with Malta. I have said it again and again. It's easy to speak of the responsibility we all have in relation to viewing migration, but it's another thing to, to realise that that is a responsibility that should be shared and resourced. Ireland supports Malta very much in relation to this. I'm very much looking forward to visiting the European Agency on, on and, uh, uh, and I wanted to thank those who work in it, uh, not only for what they do in situ in Malta, but what they do in, uh, in advising and giving structural advice uh, to other countries dealing with, with, with migration. I think it has been a, 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 a very good visit. I'm looking forward to moving on uh, to other aspects of it. I, I think there is so much that uh, there is so much that we share. The fact, the fact that we are both island nations means as well that we, we're interested in everything maritime and we will be meeting and sharing perspectives in relation to the United Nations sponsored conferences in relation to the future of the oceans beyond national, beyond national jurisdictions. I, I think uh, as well we are both of us anxious that there be a meaningful consequence to the citizens co consultation on the future of Europe. The future of Europe is something in which citizens participated, parliamentarians have participated, and institutions have participated. But it is very important that the hard work put in, and we have both shared what we are doing in each other's citizen participation, must be evidence in, in, uh, in, in the outcomes. I think as well, the, what is incredibly important, we are grateful to Malta for being not only understanding but being positive in its proposals in relation to helping us dealing with the consequences of, of Brexit. Uh, and I think I could only say, and I finish by, by that, by this, uh, this uh, we realise the significance of Malta uh, as a Mediterranean country too, but also a country that has been at the crossroads of civilizations, of religions, of languages, and hence, in many ways, in many ways the, some of what I will be looking at, the human manifestations in archaeolo archaeological form. What a privilege to be. Some people say, in a, how could I call a small country with three UNESCO sites in relation to this? And this is what, in fact, our future, our Europe of the future must be, in which we will be able uh, to take the things of the spirit that we want to share with each other and use our imagination in creating a Europe, as we all hope for, a Europe that will not be discussing war or endless war. But during what is I often refer to in the Ventetena Accord itself, it was people making peace in their own countries and sharing the means of making peace with others in a, in, in a Europe of peace. I think that uh, President Vela is given a, a leadership in his preparations for the Arrowless meeting, and I very much look forward to being, uh, uh, to, to being there in October. But I also have to tell you that I have invited President Phil and his wife Miriam to visit me in Ireland, and I hope that it will be able to arrange a mutual convenience, and I very, very much look forward to it. Thank you all very much. Mila Thank you. Thank you.